is this desire, this urge, this want, this need, this craving for happiness. Man wants to be happy. And the Quran says it beautifully. وَإِنَّهُ and verily he, man, لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدِ He likes goodness and he likes it immensely, intensely. And today in, on the brink of 2015, man has amassed all sorts of comforts around himself. If you're wealthy and you're famous and you're still searching for happiness in a drug pill, there's something missing. And if you're wealthy and you're famous and you're in a rehab center, there's something missing. So man is not happy. Even when he became rich and famous, he was still not happy. So the solution is somewhere else. من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة. Whoever does righteous deeds, whether they are male or female, the Quran is specific. من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن on the condition of belief, we will grant them a goodly life. The heart longs for its Lord. And any time you don't find the master, the heart keeps longing so it can't find peace and, and tranquility. It's seeking. It's searching for that master. And in every heart, the initial programming is Allah Rabbul Izzah. Test it. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد <coughs> It is in the nature of man deep within the psyche of man there is this desire this urge this want this need this craving for happiness man wants to be happy and the Quran says it beautifully. وَإِنَّهُ And verily he, man, لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدِ He likes goodness and he likes it immensely, intensely, violently. Or as if you were to say it in the language of Hollywood, man likes goodness with vengeance. He wants good, he wants happiness, he wants prosperity, he wants ease, he wants comfort. And look around you. Everything that you see around you is a product of man's desire for goodness. There was a time you used to have to travel from here to there. Traveling became difficult, it became tedious, it became cumbersome. So you thought, how can I improve this for my own benefit? So you forced the animals to take you, the horse and the mule and the donkey, that used to carry you. That required maintenance and feeding and so on. That became difficult. So you started to find an alternative and you made the automobile, the car. The car couldn't cross the ocean, so you made the Titanic. The Titanic sank, you made the aeroplane. Do you understand that whatever you've done is out of your insistent desire for comfort and goodness for yourself? And today, in, on the brink of 2015, Man has amassed all sorts of comforts around himself. Subhanallah, just imagine, you sit in the thick of winter, in the thick of winter, and when the click of a button, you get the breeze of summer coming in. Or you sit in the thick of summer, and just with the click of a button, winter comes. It's not here tonight, because curtain's going cheap on us, but... You understand what I mean, the aircon system. Just with a click of a button. You used to have to travel miles on end to get water. Now you go to the tap and whatever temperature you want, it comes out there. So man has a lot of comforts around himself. So we've amassed all these comforts. 
So you would have expected man to be happy. Because sweetheart, you got everything you want. You know, the weather's nice. Imagine this, it's night. And it's bright. And there's no smoke and there's no soot. And you should be happy. So with all this goodness, man is still not happy. So you think, you have all the ingredients that you thought was going to make you happy. Why haven't you become happy? And depression levels, subhanAllah, let's just start with unhappiness levels. In our country, Australia, my Allah protected with peace and prosperity. In this country of ours, there is no walls, walillahi alhamd. There is no, you know, poverty. Life is good. Yet, within the age of 16 to 25, which is the golden years of your life, and for those that are above it, that's still golden, but you understand, this is like the prime of your life. At this age, life is supposed to be good. Yet, a quarter of the youth are not happy with their lives. A 24.34%, just to be accurate, are not happy with, we are not happy. And... The amount that are depressed at any one time, 6% of the youth are depressed at any one time. Research says that before a child reaches the age of 25, in America, 25% or a quarter of the population would have at some point or another suffered depression. With all the material comfort around you, you have found, subhanAllah, if, even if you have time, you've made games for yourself to keep busy. You have iPhone and iPad and iPod and any, everything, and, and yet man is not happy. So, where's the secret of happiness? Because you thought it was in the water, if it comes in the tap, I'd be happy, it can, you ain't happy. You thought if the weather was good, I'll be happy. The weather's perfect, you ain't happy. You thought if the night could be bright, I'd be happy. The sky, I mean, bright night, you're not happy. What's missing? There's, there's, something's missing that is making mankind depressed. And you search Amidst humanity, in our beautiful country here, some years ago, we have a population of 20-something million, or at that time we had 20-something million, and in a population of, you know, 24 to 27 million, you had 9 million prescriptions of antidepressant drugs. And forget about adults, little kids are suffering from depression. Smile, man. Little kids are suffering from depression. So they ask these little school age kids, kid, why are you depressed? What will make you happy? So they say this unanimously, two things. You listening? Two things. If I was wealthy and if I was famous, I'd be happy. So if I had money and if I was famous, I'd be happy. And secretly within your hearts, you all feel that too sometimes. You know, if I had more likes on Facebook, <laughs> or if I had more money, I'd be happy. So what they did, or what I did, I looked at the life of the rich and famous, the movie stars. And subhanAllah, do I need to tell you that they're depressed? Overdose, my Allah protect Ya Rabb, and we are no one to judge, and no one knows the ending, and my Allah give us a good ending, Ya Rabb. But if you're wealthy, and you're famous, and you're still searching for happiness in a drug pill, there's something missing. And if you're wealthy, and you're famous, and you're in a rehab center, there's something missing. And go look at the stars of, of Hollywood and Bollywood and look at the mess that their lives are engulfed in. So man is not happy. 
Even when he became rich and famous, he was still not happy. So the solution is somewhere else. And we thought, let's medicate. It's a chemical imbalance, so we'll medicate. In the last 20 years, medication for depression has increased 300%. So you think that if I over-medicate, it'll kill the thing. You know, the, the disease. Yet, the disease has increased with it. If you look at population graphs, the older population, less percentage of them have depression. But as it moves to our time, currently, by the age of 25, 25% of the population has depression. So it's a problem. And what I want to do, inshallah, in the moments available to me, I will give you, because it's not enough time, I'll give you serious solutions from the kitab and also in practice so that you could practice, inshallah. Let's start Quranically. And the beauty is Allah has given us solutions. Allah Rabbul Izza has shown us the way. Listen, Qala Subhana, Inna Hadaynahu Sabila, Imma Shakiran wa Imma Kafura. Verily, we have shown him the path. It is up to him to be grateful or ungrateful, to accept or to reject, to believe or to deny. And whoever accepts, Allah Rabbul Izza gives him or blesses him with a beautiful life. Qala Subhana, Man Amila Saliham. من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة. Whoever does righteous deeds, whether they are male or female, the Quran is specific. من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن on the condition of belief, we will grant them a goodly life. The Quran has the solution. And look at the other side. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And whoever leaves my path and my guidance and my remembrance, then I will make his life narrow and restricted, confined and confounded. In this life, مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And on the day of judgment, I'll resurrect him blind. So he gets up in Qiyamah and he says, رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمًا وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Oh Allah, why have you resurrected me blind? And I could see in the other world, I could see what happened. Allah, Rabbu Al-Izza says, كَذَلِكَ آتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Thus our signs came to you, our verses were rehearsed to you, Islam presented to you, guidance shown to you, you forsook it, forgot about it, وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى and thus today we forsake you, we forget about you. So on the one side, it is restricted, confined, confounded living. On the other side, for those who accept a righteous and blessed life. Now let's look at the formula, because time is running out. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ the first requisite of a good life is correct belief. The first requisite of a good life is the correct belief. The correct belief in the oneness of Allah Rabbul Izza, in who your Lord is, who your master is. Understand, before we were sent on this earth, Allah Rabbul Izza gathered all the children of Adam. And he asks, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? So there everyone said, Bala, yes indeed, Shahidna, we swear, you alone are our Lord. That was engraved in the essence of your existence. With that programming, you were sent to this earth. And then you woke up in this earth. And the inside and the soul, the depth of your being is yearning for its master. 
The heart longs for its Lord. And any time you don't find the master, the heart keeps longing so it can't find peace and, and tranquility. It's seeking. It's searching for that master. And in every heart, the initial programming is Allah Rabbul Izzah. Test it. And I looked at footage on end. Allah Rabbul Izzah gives you the test. Qala subhana. فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ When man is in deep waters, as in, in difficulty and problems, who does he turn to when a bridge is falling down? Oh God, oh God. See that one Lord, there's three sections in the human mind. There's the conscious head, the subconscious head, and the unconscious head. And the unconscious head of man, the programming is Allah Rabbul Izzah. So when difficulty strikes and it transcends the conscious and the subconscious and it hot wires straight to the unconscious, the initial programming comes and that is only Allah. Look at the story of Cat Stevens. I was drowning and I said, God, if you save me, I will do this. He never said, you know, oh, mother of God, or Mary, or, or father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, or, or, or Buddha, or Naf. It shows that the actual programming is Allah alone. So when you don't find the master, the heart yearns for that Lord. So Muslims, find your Lord first, understand who Allah is, and trust me, it will emancipate you. When you realize, Ar-Razaq, who Allah, who is man after that? That the one who provides me is Allah. I don't need to fear the boss. I don't need to fear this person. I, don't, I am set free, unshackled and unleashed. When you realize that the one who cures is Allah, and that Allah is your personal Allah. Imagine in sajda, what do you say? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Glory be to my Lord who is most high. When that relationship builds and that realization comes that Allah Rabbul Izzah is my Lord, then trust me, I'm not saying you won't get depressed. Because sometimes calamities come. The Quran tells the Prophet, We understand that your chest feels congested at what they are saying. So you feel sad, but you will conquer it. You'll climb over it. You'll succeed. So therefore, the first thing Muslims work on the aqidah. Khalas, long enough we've gone to graves and to, you know, ropes and to this peer and this buzurg and this master and this thing. Khalas, yeah, enough, let's turn to the Lord of the heavens. Allah Jalla Subhana. Make that link direct between you and your master and trust me, it will set you free. And then the second part, and again, this aqidah is a whole course and there's no time to discuss the aqidah, so I'm just... I'm just giving the, the surface, the initial part, fix the belief. Understand who your Lord is. And then after that, do proper deeds. Things that Allah and His Prophet taught you that are designed to make your life good. I researched depression. And currently it's one of the big killers in the world, more than a million people per year died due to suicide, due to sadness and depression. It's, it's huge. It's a calamity. And they are looking at ways, where is happiness? Where is the answer? So, in that research, I want to give spend a few minutes with you, moments with you, and give some practical steps if I may. And Islam is not a religion against practicality. If it works, it works. It is part of good deeds. So they researched, because in, in, the, in civilized places, amidst advanced civilizations, it is an epidemic. They came across a group of people in Papua New, New Guinea, the Kaluli. And if I've said the name wrong, just imagine it's something else. But khalas, it's the, the Kaluli. 
They are a very primitive tribe in Papua New Guinea. Now, uh, a person by the name of Edward Shefflin worked with them for more than a decade. And in questioning, he was excessively questioning and trying to find depression inside these people. And amidst the 2,000 he interviewed, he couldn't find depression. They are a, a primitive Aboriginal people. And, and I want to point here, the Aboriginals, they have a very pure belief. You know, when the Aboriginals of our land, and according to one of the stories, you know how, how they have story time and stuff, well, one of that, they believe in a god called Aknatu. Aknatu means a being without a rectum. So they thought that our god is one that doesn't have a rectum, as in doesn't have a rectum. And <laughs> I, I thought I could do it better, but then I realized I can't. A being without a rectum. So the psyche was, if he doesn't have a rectum, he doesn't go to the toilet. So if he doesn't go to the toilet, he is clean and he is God. So when the other faiths came, like imagine, you know, um, when the missionaries came, they used to ask them, believe in, in their God, or, you know, believe in Jesus or something like that. So the Aboriginals used to ask, is he Aknatu? Is he without a rectum? So they used to say, no. So you say, no, nah, can't be God. You see, their belief was very pristine, simple, but they believed in that one God who was not like man, who didn't have these desires and, you know, the needs and so on and so forth. So those people, the Kaluli, only one case bordering depression is found, nothing tangible. The rest of them, it's non-existent in them. So researchers studied their way of life and from that took four or five or six points, um, practical steps that could help overcome this issue. I want to use the steps and link them with our religion and give them to you and inshallah you should be fine after this. All right. The first one, uh, the Kaluli people are an Aboriginal people, so they're hunter-gatherers essentially. Which means most of the day they're out about trying to gather food, hunt animals, you know, harvest and so on, um, to bring food, you know, for, for that night. So on average, they are physically active for about an intense four hours a day. Even at the old age, they still look like very professional athletes. There's no fat, slobby thing, and you know, they're not out of shape. They're, they're, their face is not like it hasn't seen the sun in a couple of decades, do you understand? Uh, they're very active and so on. So from that they deduced that exercise is key. So they researched and they found that if you exercise and understand exercise by itself is very unnatural. Like when you are on the treadmill at any time fitness marabuka, <laughs> I, I figured I advertise. Uh, so if, when you're on the treadmill, your head knows that I'm not going anywhere. You know, you're running, you, you know I'm not going anywhere. So it's a bit depressing. But those people and the actual people, um, they are physical because they act, they're doing things, so it's productive. So it's important to make your exercise have a productive element in it. So for half, here I'm, this is free advice, um, other people will probably charge you for this, but for half an hour a day, not a day, half an hour, three times a week. Walk really fast for half an hour. You know, like you're missing a bus and you're walking after it. Yeah? So for half an hour, three times a week. And walk with someone. 
you know, serious, walk with, with, if you're a sister with a sister, or if you're a brother with a brother, or if you're husband and wife together, uh, go walk, and that way you chat. It's a social thing, and at the same time, there's physical work in it. And what that does, trust me, exercise, if I could put the benefits of exercise in a pill and give it to you, you'd spend a lot of money for that pill. The, the benefits are huge. The body changes from loser mentality to basically winner mentality. All the feel-good chemicals are released. The circuits reattach. It, it, it's, it's awesome. So for 30 minutes, three times a day, and this is one of our problems in our time, everyone's just sitting. You're just sitting. It's either sitting in front of a screen, or you're sitting in a car, or you're sitting on a desk. You're not doing much. So get up and get busy. Half an hour, three times a week. The results show fantastic improvements, drop in depression, and all the positive uh, chemicals and hormones are developed in the body. And as Muslims, especially if you live you know, near a mosque, why not walk there for Fajr? Walk there for Fajr with your, with your family, and it will be a, and you're actually going somewhere it's productive. Walk there when you come back for, for Maghrib or something like that. But three times a week, just say I'm walking to the masjid. And having said that I'm conscious that, you know, Australia is a big place, so if you live very far away from the masjid, probably won't work for you. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want mothers calling me, you know, stars, the sun's still walking to the masjid, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's been a long time. There's no, there's no trace of depression left in it. So walk for half an hour and three times a week. Trust me, the results are, are huge. Secondly, we are social creatures. And with modernization and with civilization, the curse of loneliness has come. So even when you sit on a dinner table, have you noticed everyone's on their phone? It's so sad. Serious. This, so everyone's become lonely and stuck to their own little screens and their own little walls. Yet we, for 1,800 million years, we were very social. We were hunter-gatherers. So what you need to do is constructively socialize. It, it does wonders for the head. Because understand, those that have us all going towards depression, their first inclination is to be alone in a corner in the dark. That just feeds them more. Pull them out or pull yourselves out and go to a place of positive socialization. What's a good place to socialize with really good people? The house of Allah. The masjid. Wallah, as soon as you enter it, you're filled with peace and serenity. And the people who come there are really good people. They are not there to, you know, whinge and whine and backstab you and take something from you and so on. They've come for Allah. You've come for Allah. Sit and talk and socialize and have a little, you know, drink or something like this. Friendships will develop. And this is one of the gifts of salah that we do it five times a day. And that's why I say the religion was designed for success. In a busy world, the Muslim takes five times a day break, go to a masjid, go somewhere, pray, socialize, meet, interact, and then come back. So constructive socializing is very important. And for those that are blessed with parents and family, what a joy. Subhanallah, I called Sheikh Yusuf Parker one day and he didn't answer my phone. I'm just saying this public so that next time he answers his phone on time. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, Sheikh, uh, no, he, he texted back and he said, uh, I was uh, having breakfast with mom. So I said, what a blessing that a mom is around and a dad is around, that you can go and sit at their feet and eat with them and, and talk to them. And at night before you sleep, they're there. And it, it, it's such a joy, family. So celebrate it. Forget this, these screens. Deal with people. And these screens are changing the psyches of people. I meet a kid, the shyest kid in the universe. You know, he's... 
I don't mean a kid. I, I teach so old, you know, high school students. So I, shyest person in the world. Then you see him online. He's he's king. <laughs> Serious. You see the pictures they take. It's. <laughs> I, I. Wallah, I saw one. Because just so you understand the psyche of people, this kid is taking a picture, and I hope he's not here tonight. <laughs> he's sitting like, you know that I don't care look, Have you, you, you know, the, yeah, like that. And there's two girls around on, here. On. So he's, he's written on his uh, you know, profile, girls are chasing me and I'm, I don't care and stuff like that. <laughs> So I looked at the picture, and one is his sister and one is his cousin, you know, but <laughs> people don't know. So you see the normal, it's not, no, he doesn't have a problem, he's fine, it's just he thinks people don't know, so I can get away with this, you know, I'm, I'm hot, I'm the new thing. But it's changing the psychology of people. So now they're becoming really good online, really sad face to face no social skills no salam alaikum uh, so in front of these screens we have been uh, we've lost the skills that we once had and that's why we're moving more and more away from um, from humankind and into our own little worlds that we can control i don't like this clip so let me click on another one i don't like this movie let me click on another one and then when you come out to the real world it doesn't work like that you know you don't like him you have to live with him so you go now i'll go back to my little hole so therefore socialize face to face pull yourselves out of the strap so i've given you three so far first is correct belief Second is exercise. Third is socialize. Fourth, eat proper, eat well. Now, let me go through this. My brother's smiling like eat well. 60% um, of the dry weight of the brain is fat. 60% if you were to get your head and dry it and you know, weigh it, the, the brain, 60% uh, of it is fat. So we have ample amount of fat that the body seems to make, but there are two types that it doesn't make. They're called the essential fats. If anyone knows this better than me, just pretend I know it more than you, okay? <laughs> There's two types of fats that the body doesn't make. They're called essential fats, and they're basically the omega-3s and the omega-6s. That the body doesn't make. That is based on your intake, what you eat. Now, the omega-6s are inflammatory fats like they make things and you know inflame or grow bigger so and an inflamed head is a depressed head like if the brain is at inflamed level it's depressed and the omega-3s are anti-inflammatory like they they shrink it so the ratio these days so okay the omega-6s come from uh, grains and animals that eat grains and the omega-3s come from grass and the animals that eat grass the problem in our days is even the animals are fed grains so we have an overdose of the omega-6s it's in everything is at inflamed level your joints your head your brain and all the rest of it the ratio should be one to one so there should be one omega-3 for one omega-6 so since it's not there, since we have way more omega-6s, omega it's time that you take supplements for omega-3. And uh, the active ingredient in that is EPA. And what you need in EPA, listen to me carefully, I'm, I'm illegally medicating. <laughs> if you want, that should get me out legally, yeah? If I said if you want. <laughs> if you want. Take a thousand milligrams per day of the EPA active ingredient in omega-3. And they've seen amazing results with it. All the joints come back to normal, the dryness of the eyes go, the head uh, feels uh, better and happier and so on and so forth. So take these four things from me and, con and, and follow it rigor rigorously, meticulously, like religiously, keep doing it. And insha'Allah, correct the belief in the aqidah and I'll give you one solution directly from the Qur'an. 
This is what Allah instructed His Prophet when he was feeling down. He said, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرَكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We understand that you feel congested, your heart feels squeezed up based on the utterances of the people. You know what people are saying? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ then say Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhan Rabbi Al-Azim, and increase in your sajda. And Subhanallah, I think everyone here can say in sajda you find what you do not find outside sajda. So much so that they medicate suicidal people to excessive, you know, face on the floor type thing. Just, you know, do the sajda. So, Get into sajda and glorify your Lord. The, the heart will find who it's seeking. And the more you glorify, the cleaner the heart will come, the healthier the heart will come. Exercise, eat right, socialize well. May Allah, Rabbul Izza, cure you and guide you and bless you and us along with you. فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتُ إِن تَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَإِن تَكُوا سَيِّئَةً فَمِن نَفْسِ وَشَيْطَانِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ ينادي فؤادي بليل السكون بدمع